Hey, what's up folks, this is GK. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the DevSecOps. So if you are not aware of DevOps, I highly recommend watching my playlist on DevOps. And if you know about DevOps, then you would learn about the DevSecOps in this video. So I'm going to talk about the usual DevOps pipeline without security. And then I'm going to talk about what is DevSecOps. And I'm also going to discuss about uh, the SAST and DAST and some other terminologies. And finally, I will go over some of the pipeline uh, with security integrated, meaning the DevSecOps pipeline. So for those who are not aware of the DevOps pipeline, it starts with, you know, Git, uh, where developers would commit the code. So from the left side, you have uh, developers committing the code in the Git repository. And then, you know, another developer will take the code or, you know, create branch or, you know, again, commit the code. Uh, to the repository and from there on your Jenkins job will take that code, build the code or it does any uh, static scans or anything as part of the pipeline and then once the code is ready or uh, the code is built, uh, there would be a chef or Ansible uh, which would take the code, which would take uh, the packaged, uh, the binary and then it would deploy in an environment. It could be a QA or a pre-prod where a bunch of uh, QA tests would run and then eventually the packaged code once everything is done as part of the pipeline would be deployed to the production. So it starts from the left where you uh, commit the code and then to the right you deploy the code to the production. So that's typically a DevOps pipeline. Now you might have heard this term more often like you know DevOps is more about the integration of dev and operations and you, you might have now you see in this pipeline like you have proper integration of dev and operations. But often one key team that's missed or you know the team is more like an afterthought after the code is deployed is security but now if you have looked into many companies or if you are applying as a job for devops you will hear this term the devsecops because every company is emphasizing more on security these days uh, obviously because of you know cloud or a lot of lot of things are happening around around the world with respect to security so the whole emphasis is now more on how you can bring security as part of your DevOps and make it as DevSecOps. So meaning not only along with Dev and operations, but also you want to bring security into one umbrella. If I have to say in one sentence, what is DevSecOps is like integrating your Dev, security and operations teams together and bringing that culture and mindset for the developers to have security first along with their um, code when they're writing the code and also bringing the security from far right of the pipeline uh, to the left of the pipeline, meaning to the initial stages of your SDLC. So now, if you do not bring that, so what happens is, so let's say you have the code and then you know you commit the code and eventually the code is going into some server, EC2 or, or some VM. So then the security would start executing their uh, cases or start doing their tests or anything like that. So it would be too late uh, for a developer to fix the changes or fix the vulnerabilities that the security team has found out. So that's why if you bring it to the left, then you would uh, fix the issues much earlier and you would, it would make it very inexpensive to, to fix the issues. Basically, it is solving two problems. One is uh, building that mindset as usual. DevOps is more about the mindset as well and the culture. So building that mindset of the security into, into the devs and you know operations and also uh, the second important thing is how we're going to automate the whole thing, you know, which is which is a uh, which is crucial here because DevOps is also more about automation. So how you want to automate the whole pipeline uh, from fr first to last with the security integration. So that's why we're going to talk about the two important uh, terms called SAST and DAST. So SAST is Static Application Security Testing, where it focuses more on testing your code's vulnerability. Like, you know, it would scan your code repo. If you are following some unsafe code practices, uh, initially when you're writing the code, or if you have written the code in a way, like, you know, it might be, uh, the application might be prone to the cross-site uh, scripting attack. So these are the things that, you know, SAST will identify at the part of, uh, at, as part of your uh, code commit. So SAST is more static, meaning it will scan the code and then it will provide the report, like whether your code is safe or not. It is nothing to do with your application or software. So you can integrate SAST at the early stage of your pipeline, as soon as you know a pull request is done or uh, if you want to integrate that as part of your commits or anything, so you can integrate there and then you, know, you would know as part of the pipeline if you want to look at the results 
and like fail the pipeline you know if you found that there are vulnerabilities in the code so that way developers will go back and and fix the issue if they find anything in their code so now let's talk about dask so dask is dynamic application security testing so where you have to deploy the code meaning you are going to test on top of your application once the application is installed so let's imagine how the pipeline is going to be so after the code is committed uh, if you run the sast in your jenkins pipeline the sast results are fine so the results are okay meaning the results have passed there are no issues with your code vulnerability so the code will be built and as part of the build you might run your unit test and then you take the code package uh, you take the build uh, or uh, the binary and then deploy that into a pre prod or any q environment where uh, you know you would run this dast scans and then you would know like as a whole application as an application whether your application is is okay uh, or it, if it has any vulnerabilities then you would fix it again now dast is more towards end of your uh, pipeline as opposed to sast because sast is more static code as far as dast is concerned you can simulate like uh, phishing attacks or dictionary attacks or you know if it's a website you can you can simulate multiple attacks or if it's a web server you can use a lot of software in the market to simulate hacker attacks uh, from a fresh perspective it's more like a black box testing once th this is done then you are you are confident about your application and then application will finally go to your cloud or uh, you know wherever you're trying to deploy or on prem there you'll always have your waf and other security uh, you know uh, tools that are going to take care of your application inside the cloud so now let's look at sast versus dast some of the key differences that you want to understand um, as a devsecops engineer so sast like i've said is more about static code analysis where you don't have to install the software so you're going to do a scan on top of the code so it is much faster and you would get the feedback much faster than dast whereas for dast you need to have your application installed so it's less expensive to fix issues in sast because you are identifying the issues much faster as opposed to dast because let's say you deployed the software and you found a vulnerability it takes time to come back to the initial part of the pipeline and developer to fix it again you know it has to be deployed and the dast has to run so it's uh, much easier to find it in sast uh, and then much inexpensive it's inexpensive way of fixing it and sast obviously cannot discover runtime issues because you're not installing the software here whereas dast can discover the runtime issues sast can support all softwares because it is more about the code whereas dast is more suitable for web applications and web services i hope you got some understanding about the devsecops and the pipeline and and how you would integrate the security as part of your devsecops now with this i'm going to show you a very good example uh, that was illustrated in one of the github and i'm going to paste the link in the description as well so let's go into that uh, pipeline all right folks so this is the project that i'm talking about i'm going to paste the link in the description uh, but this is a very good illustration of how your devsecops pipeline would look like so here uh, the author is using python as a code but if you're using any other programming language uh, the tools and you know the concept would remain same so it is built on jenkins pipeline as a code you can see here in the github repo uh, first after the developer would commit the code you know uh, it will second stage of the pipeline would check out the project and then it would do some scans and then you know it does sast and then finally it deploys to the production but let's look at the diagram more carefully here so github pipeline and configuration where you have all your jenkins pipeline as a code and all those files are as part of your ci cd server so that might be running as a you know slave for jenkins so now as soon as a user a developer would commit the code it will trigger the pipeline and in the pipeline the first check is to see if that developer has any secret so usually what happens is let's say your application uh, has uh, you know username and passwords or for database passwords or in the configuration files if you if you forget to use you know git ignore then those passwords might go into your github which is a dangerous thing right i mean anybody can look at your database passwords that's what the check here is and then there would be a sast which is uh, the bandit is the tool here that's doing a SAST analysis or SAST, SAST scan. So once the scan is successful, in the next step, here uh, the user is using uh, container audit for Linus. And then once this is done, uh, Ansible has been used to build the environment on demand or uh, create VMs and all the, all sorts of things on AWS. And then the DAST is 
triggered the tool is uh, nikto and once this is done it would finally the environment will be deployed for production and then you know the other security rules or waf rules will be applied in the production so this is a very good example of a devsecops pipeline i would recommend you know go through this uh, github page and then see if you can clone the repo and then try it out if you have a aws account but if not just understand these principles and see the uh, different tools that are available in the market for sast and dast and build your knowledge on what what is devsecops all about with that thank you so much for watching i hope uh, you understood a fair bit of uh, devsecops and let me know in the comment section if this video was helpful thanks for watching Take care. Bye.